Hi, everybody. It is Sunday, March 5th. We are the last week of the Lyle Lovett Acoustic Tour. Uh, I'm going to finish up. We have two shows up in Virginia and then head home, and then uh, I won't see uh, Lyle and the guys again until middle of April. We've got some shows, uh, four shows, I think, to do in the middle of April, and then in June we'll, we'll start the uh, the large band summer tour, and uh, lo really looking forward to that. Getting back together with all of the that cast of characters is really amazing. But we've had a a remarkable time on this one, and shows have been just great. But uh, everything's been tempered with an incredible period of loss. Uh, during this tour. I think I've lost, <clears throat> in the course of the uh, six weeks we've been off, I've, I've lost uh, seven friends uh, have passed and then still reeling from the, the, the passing of, uh, of David Lindley, which I just find just absolutely, which I just can't imagine. This was one of the most remarkable, special men and musicians I've, I've ever known in my entire career. And, and my relationship with David goes back, you know, 50, 52 years. And uh, it's just, uh, it's hard. And then the next day to find out that the, the great Michael Rhodes had passed was like just, that was like the, 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 the second gut punch. Michael, uh, I got to know Michael I, when I was first coming to Nashville in 1980. Uh, I was coming here all the time. Michael uh, was kind of the other bass player in town, and we became really, really close friends. I, I, I so <coughs> admire, admired him both a, as a guy, one of the cats. He was just great. And just a beautiful, beautiful player. I mean, he did tons. I mean, almost every country record you listen to from the 80s to today, uh, odds are Michael was probably on most of that. And uh, just, but, he, you know, he was, he's was he been with Joe Bonamassa, all kinds of people. I mean, he's one of those guys that, that covered lots of territory. And uh, apparently he kept his, his illness. He was pancreatic cancer. He kept it quiet because most of the people that I've talked to that knew him didn't even know this was going on. So it's been just <clears throat> for all the joy and excitement and happiness that we're having out here. Um, there's just been this thing, I mean, you know, Wayne Shorter and, and just this, it's on and on. And, uh, you know, people say, oh, we're getting to that age. You know, there's an element of that of truth in that. Uh, I know my folks and my grandparents lived into their 90s, and that's kind of what I always think of as that age. I don't tend to think of kind of 50 to 75 as being that that age group, but so many of the people I know, that's the ages where they're where they're going. And uh, so, as Warren Zevon said, enjoy every sandwich because you just don't know what's uh, what's around the corner for you. I mean. Uh, I'll be 76 in May, so you <clears throat> you start to look at even in the best of circumstances, you know, there's a finite amount of dates left on that calendar, so you want to make the most out of everything you can. So, um, but I wanted to go back today and, and revisit an artist who, you know, is another exemplary artist um, that I just, I love working with, and I have the utmost respect for his humanity and his musicianship, and that's the incredible Phil Kagey. And I want to go back and just play a few more tunes from the album that I did with Phil, um, just to share those, because uh, he was he was something, is something special, because he's still working. I mean, it's not, he's not gone. But we did this album called Love Broke Through in 1976. Uh, I believe it was released in 77. But for those, I mean, Phil is one of the, uh, been one of the preeminent artists in the contemporary Christian music scene. But he's one of those guys, you know, I talk to, you know, like really monster guitar players in other genres. And you say Phil Kagey and they go, ooh, yeah, man, Phil, now that's the guy. Um, he, he's amazing. So I'm going to play a couple more tracks from this and I'm going to give you a little list of credits and you can go back and check the previous video I did, I talked more extensively about Phil. 
I just felt a need uh, kind of jonesing for something really great today. And, and Phil um, fits the bill perfectly. So it's myself on bass, you know, Jim Gordon on drums. Another incredibly tragic story of this, of this industry. Jim is still with us, but the, the, the story of what happened to Jim is, is really staggering. Um, and that's still been a hard one to wrap my head around, and it's from a long time ago. But So it's Jim Gordon on drums, Phil Kagey on guitar, Michael O'Martian on keyboards, Larry Nechtel on electric piano, regular piano, and organ on this. Larry's just one of the greats, one of the all-time greats. Phil Baker on horns, uh, Marshall Sear on horn, uh, Don Menza on sax, Buck Herring on percussion, uh, Peter Hopper on percussion, and Phil Kagey on percussion, Annie Herring and Matthew Ward and Mylon Lefebvre are on background vocals. Um, it was produced by Buck Herring, and uh, Buck's wife, Annie, uh, she and, and Matthew and, and their sister uh, were the second chapter of X group, who I did a number of projects with over the years. Uh, Michael O'Mardian did the string arrangements on it. Um, and um, I think that's all the info that, that I've seen right here on this. But I'm going to uh, jump into some music now. Let me just see if I, there's any more info. Okay, well, this is called Disappointment. So Phil Kagey, Disappointment. called Take Me Closer. Take me closer to your 
Jim Gordon. I think one of the most fun dates I did was a Billy Preston album, uh, Billy Preston and Sarita. Uh, and uh, it was double drums on it. And it was Jim Gordon and Jim Keltner both playing at the same time with me sitting in between them. And boy, it was the best of both worlds, I'll tell you, because Gordon just laid down the groove and Keltner just does colors and textures. He paints pictures when he plays. 
And it was so much fun. But I did Hall and Oates with Jim, all kinds. I did tons of records before the tragedy of his life and encompassed him. But uh, a remarkable musician. When I was in group therapy, not in group therapy, but in the band group therapy in 1967, when we went in the studio to do our album, which we weren't allowed to play on because we were too young and inexperienced. Um, so the Wrecking Crew played on our album. Mike Post produced us. Well, Jim, uh, Hal Blaine was the drummer, and Jim Gordon was the new young percussionist in town. And that was where we first met in 67. So, okay, uh, one last tune here. This is called Abraham. So this is, again, Phil Kagan from his album from 1967, or 1976, sorry. Start telling one story and you end up in that story again. Here we go. Look at the stars, Abraham, and believe I am. Can you count stars, Abraham, or the grains of sand? I see why the tide keeps rolling. The album is Love Broke Through from 1976. I mean, it's always interesting. There's, there's Stylistically, you hear, you know, when I'm listening to all these, when I'm listening to songs that we recorded in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and the uh, beginning of the 2000s and through the teens, I mean, different stylistic things have happened through all of those and they can kind of 
pickups, sometimes it's, it's a specific, like when the DX7s and synths started making their appearance, all of a sudden there was that sonic in there, or when there was, you know, electronic drums and percussion, so. Uh, but thank you, Phil Kagi, for just, you know, an entire career of great music and, and great friendship. And again, man, my heart goes out to Michael Rhodes's family and David Lindley's family and Wayne Shorter's family and just uh, the family of, of so many that, that we've been losing recently. It's just quite staggering. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, thank God, thank God for recording. Because, um, you know, it's like I sit and I watch old movies and, you know, these people in, in that, the film I'm watching may have been gone for 30, 40 years but they're still so alive watching their performances and it's that way listening to, um, to music. I mean, one of the hard parts for me is when I go through my book now, because it took, I worked on a book for a long time and, um, and I go through there now and there's a, a lot of people in that book who are no longer with us and I'm just grateful that, uh, that they are in the book. I'll, I'll see them every time I peruse through it and it brings a, smile to my face because I remember the, the moments you can't of course you can't tell if I'm smiling it's I remember Joan Rivers somebody she asked somebody who once she says am I smiling <laughs> and, so, and so much Botox and stuff she was such a hoot but yeah I, I just, so that's that so I, I'm gonna get running here uh, this is but like I said this is our last day off so there's no venue today and uh, so we'll be back with a see what where where we're playing tomorrow and uh, take you through that but more than anything, my heart's with everybody. Just take care and try to enjoy every day in, in your family and your friends and, and, uh, and uh, just make the most out of it. So, okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.